Yes, hello again, Dan. Uh, thanks once more for coming back to Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV. So uh, this next featured bike here is another quite rare classic that I spotted uh, on the Moto Marini uh, Riders Club stand while I was at the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. Now, although uh, this bike here is maybe not a fully fledged uh, scrambles or motocross racer, it's more of a kind of uh, adventure or maybe even enduro machine, but I still thought that it would be uh, quite an interesting bike to take a look at here on uh, CDB uh, TV. Now, on the day that I grabbed these uh, video clips and uh, pictures, there was uh, no information available on this bike, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it's, uh, it's still a Moto Marini uh, 500 uh, Camel uh, from 1982, fitted uh, with, of course, a two-cylinder uh, V-twin four-stroke engine. But again, Moto Marini were uh, yet another one of the well-known Italian motorcycle uh, manufacturers who were established back in 1937 by Alfonso uh, Marini in uh, Malvasia in Bologna and uh, throughout uh, the following decades uh, they certainly manufactured all manner of motorcycles including uh, road going and road racing bikes and of course uh, these uh, 72 degree uh, V-twin uh, 500s which uh, were certainly among some of their most uh, successful models. Although, uh, as I mentioned, the owner of this bike uh, wasn't around at the time I took the pictures and uh, unfortunately for me, uh, they didn't have any background or information attached to the bike while it was sitting here on display uh, at the show. But I'm quite uh, confident that uh, what we're looking at here is uh, a proper uh, Moto Marini 500 from uh, that year. Now I'm certainly uh, no expert on these Italian uh, Moto Marini 500s and uh, I'm not pretending uh, to know my uh, kangaroos from my camels but uh, back in the 1980s these uh, Marinis were hugely popular in their native Italy and uh, a few other countries around uh, Central uh, Europe although here in the UK, they were virtually uh, unheard of at that time and uh, very few bikes were actually imported into uh, this country. But you can see that it's uh, quite a big intimidating lump of a bike with that tubular steel uh, chassis and that quite sizable uh, V-twin four-stroke engine uh, sitting inside the frame, which is, of course, what makes it uh, good as a green lane adventure bike and uh, not a serious uh, off-road uh, motocross scrambler. Although you can uh, see here that uh, the frame is just a simple tubular steel type of construction, just like uh, most other uh, off-road bikes uh, of its time. And uh, it's said that uh, later versions of these uh, camel chassis uh, were switched uh, to square box section uh, types of construction. Although as far as I know, uh, this uh, small diameter tubular steel frame was still uh, tough and strong enough uh, to cope with anything that this bike uh, would encounter either on or uh, off the road. Which uh, brings us uh, quite nicely onto this uh, big 500 uh, V-twin four-stroke engine that's sitting inside uh, the chassis, which uh, I have on good authority was a 72-degree uh, V-twin with uh, two valves uh, per cylinder. And uh, on a good day, our uh, Moto Marini 500 would uh, pump out around the 42 horsepower uh, mark if it was uh, worked hard enough. But this bike and its engine uh, were without doubt uh, radically different uh, from anything that had uh, gone before. And uh, to feed those uh, twin pots in the cylinders, it was a pair of Italian uh, Delorto carburetors that were used uh, to supply and keep them fed uh, with fuel and air. And uh, the air supply 
was also drawn uh, through a foam filter and airbox that was located uh, just underneath uh, the bike's uh, fuel tank. But as you can no doubt uh, decipher, this big 500 uh, certainly liked a drink, so uh, when it was worked hard it could certainly swallow gas at an alarming rate. And uh, although I never actually heard this engine running, I expect that it uh, would have been uh, quite a smooth uh, ride when it was running, as uh, most big uh, twins uh, tend to be, but uh, it's certainly an unconventional layout of an engine to fit inside a bike that would occasionally be used uh, off-road. But as I mentioned, uh, I'm certainly not up to speed on all of my uh, Moto Marini models, but uh, I'm pretty sure that these bikes uh, had a dry clutch as opposed uh, to the wet, oil-cooled uh, multi-plate clutches that we have on most uh, off-road bikes. So uh, what these dry clutches were like in terms uh, of their operation, uh, I'm not uh, exactly sure. Now the Moto at Marini Riders Club also had this uh, nice uh, cutaway of the Marini V-Twin engine that was sitting here uh, on a stand and you could see uh, that the camshaft and uh, crank were uh, linked by a rubber tooth belt to operate the camshaft and uh, valve gear and this uh, motor here also had uh, old school uh, push rods and rockers which was quite unusual uh, to still see uh, on a motorcycle engine in the 1980s but uh, certainly a unique and unusual uh, motor and you can see just how all of the internal components worked if you uh, were to turn that big uh, butterfly like turn screw there on the side uh, of the engine and that way you could see all of the gears and piston and uh, other engine parts working and how they all uh, did their own uh, particular jobs. Oh and uh, by the way uh, just in case uh, you're interested uh, these uh, big 500 uh, V-twin Moto Marini engines uh, also had a six-speed uh, gearbox. So as we move on to the front end of our big uh, Moto Marini, now it's no surprise uh, to see an Italian pair of uh, forks uh, bolted onto uh, our Italian uh, motorcycle and uh, these uh, Marzocchi's uh, were pretty much a standard fit on these big uh, 500s, uh, along with, of course, uh, their alloy uh, Akrant uh, front wheels uh, as well. But these Marzocchi's were certainly very popular suspension systems, not only in the native Italy, but uh, many other uh, European countries as well, which is uh, why they were used on all manner of road-going and off-road bikes of the 1970s and 1980s. And so as we move on to the back end of our Moto Marini now, uh, the chances are that uh, also in 1982 it would have been uh, more than likely uh, a pair of Marzocchi rear shocks that uh, would have been fitted to these Camel 500s, but uh, as you can see those uh, Italian uh, made originals are now uh, no longer fitted uh, onto this bike and a replacement pair have taken uh, their place. Now, I've absolutely no idea which make or model of shocks uh, these uh, are on this bike because I was never given that information on the day, but I expect that they'll be every bit uh, as good as those uh, Italian uh, originals. Now, both of the bike's uh, header exhaust pipes uh, led uh, onto this quite substantial uh, tailpipe here on the right-hand side of the bike. And as, uh, as you can see, it's quite a big lump of a thing, which it would all add up to uh, what was said to be uh, this bike's overall weight of uh, just over the £300 uh, mark. And uh, naturally, because our 1982 uh, Moto uh, Marini was uh, a kind of off-road adventure enduro type of a machine, it also had a full 
uh, lighting pack with uh, all of the other associated uh, accessories that it needed for highway uh, use, including uh, direction indicators. But uh, those plastic uh, Polisport handguards there are certainly a good accessory, uh, not only uh, to stop your knuckles from getting battered uh, by stones, but uh, they'll certainly also help to keep your hands warm as well when you're sitting uh, on the freeway uh, at 70 miles an hour. Now, although I'm not sure what uh, the rider will see out of these uh, rear view mirrors, which uh, seem uh, to be placed in a very unusual uh, position, but uh, you can see that the bike's uh, fully equipped with all of the home uh, comforts and uh, there's also a mount there uh, bolted on to those rental handlebars uh, to fix uh, on your sat nav uh, just in case you get lost trying to find uh, another uh, gas station. But uh, moving on to the bike's uh, fuel tank which uh, I'm pretty sure is uh, of a steel type of construction and not uh, alloy or lighter fiberglass but uh, as you'd expect it would have to be uh, a decent sized uh, fuel cell to keep that big V-twin 500 uh, motor and uh, those twin Italian Delorto uh, VH, VH carburetors fed uh, with their fuel so uh, this uh, gas tank I think usually held just over 3.4 gallons of uh, petrol which was usually more than enough to keep that uh, 500 twin cylinder motor uh, ticking over uh, quite nicely. So as you can uh, no doubt gather our big Camel uh, Motor Marini had old school uh, drum brakes here at the rear and of course on the front of the bike as well but future renditions of these uh, Moto Marini's got treated to much more modern hydraulic disc brakes although uh, they'd still have to make do uh, with these uh, drum and shoe stoppers on this 1982 bike for the time being. But for older uh, vintage uh, motorcycle uh, braking systems uh, the drum stoppers that were fitted uh, to our 500 still uh, did a decent job of uh, slowing or bringing our bike uh, to a stop. So at the end of the day naturally uh, these uh, Moto Marini Camel 500s uh, aren't a serious uh, off-road uh, contender due to having that big V-twin uh, 500 motor and of course all of the other uh, accoutrements that allow it to hit uh, the highway although uh, having said that if you were to just strip the bike of all of its uh, unnecessary uh, road legal parts and then maybe leave it uh, with the bare essentials then you could probably still uh, do a classic or maybe vintage uh, scramble uh, with this machine. Okay maybe uh, you'll uh, not finish up in the top three at the end of the day but uh, you'll certainly have a bit of fun uh, taking part that's for sure and uh, besides it'd be quite good to see uh, that big V twin 500 motor thumping uh, around uh, a scrambles track. But just looking at this bike here on display at the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show, it certainly has the looks of being quite a comfy bike to ride and probably an ideal uh, commuter bike as well, or maybe just something to have a bit of fun on or uh, green laning uh, at uh, the weekends. Although, uh, as I said, you virtually never ever see these old uh, Moto Marini 500 camels uh, here in the UK because most of uh, Marini's sales were in the native Italy or uh, other countries in Central uh, Europe and uh, very few of them actually uh, made their way uh, into Britain. And so, uh, although uh, this bike's uh, maybe not our usual uh, scrambles or motocross machine that we normally feature here on CDB uh, TV, it's still uh, an off-road bike uh, or at least uh, green lane uh, type of uh, motorcycle. And uh, really the only reason I actually included it was because it was a bike that we uh, don't see too often here in the UK. So that made it uh, quite rare 
But uh, again, it's something uh, completely different and unusual. So I think it was uh, worth a few minutes here uh, on my YouTube uh, channel. So a slightly shorter video than we normally post, but uh, as I said, uh, a rare and unusual bike uh, from last year's Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. Okay, so coming up next here on Classic Dirt Bike TV by special request from one of my channel subscribers who asked for a bit more information and background on this 1981 490 Maiko Mega 2, which is a bike that I posted on my channel some years back, but I never actually added any commentary or voiceover on the video. So I'm going to put that right in our next channel uh, video posting. So if you're into your big bore open class uh, two strokers, then uh, make sure that you return or subscribe to my channel to take a look at this big bruiser of uh, a German Michael. So uh, once again, thanks for taking the time to view my video content. So until the next time, it's goodbye for now from Classic Dirt Bike TV. Mm -hmm.